Amen. I'm excited. Hallelujah. Um, my, uh, the other thing I'm excited about, I've never been to Africa, mm. but I'm going on my first trip next month. Oh. Yes. So I can't wait. In July, I'm going to Tanzania. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm, I'm there for the Assemblies of God National Conference for Tanzania. And so, uh, so I'm so excited about that. Amen. And uh, I believe as I put my foot on the land of Africa, I believe that God's going to just stir more in me. Amen. And I'm going to receive a greater impartation of what God's doing in that land. Amen. Amen. So, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, we've actually got uh, we're quite a multicultural church. And uh, so we, we have some Tanzanians in our church. And one of the girls is going to be back there on holidays from our church. So I'm going to catch up with her and meet her family. Oh, so, uh, so I'll be doing a bit of pastoring as well. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going, to be, it's going to be awesome. Hey, um, let's get into the Word. And we're talking about mentoring. All right, although I feel like the Holy Spirit's already ministered, amen. Right. <laughs> or has been the whole time. That's what I love about the Holy Spirit. There's no limitation. Yeah. Yeah. You can have a conversation over breakfast and the Holy Spirit will just drop something yeah, in man. your spirit that yeah. some, someone else says. You can, you can be walking out in nature and the Holy Spirit will give you a word. At any moment, the Holy Spirit, if we have ears to hear, if we're open and expectant, as our brother led us so well this morning, then the Holy Spirit will speak. He's always speaking, amen. Yes. But it's just us tuning in, and that's the beauty of a weekend like this. So let, let him continue to do that. Uh, we've been looking at the mentoring, and we talked last night that it's biblical, that it's modelled by Jesus, it's modelled by Moses, it's modelled right through the Bible, and that it's really important for us uh, to do that. And uh, we used the, the illustration of the jacket, and we said that uh, Elijah put the mantle, the authority, the anointing, the things that he learned, his ministry, he put it on Elisha so that Elisha could continue the ministry. And so that's what we've been talking about. Uh, mentoring is uh, discipleship. It's just simply getting one-on-one. -on -one. You know, I found this. Um, I can, I can, it takes, I don't know about you preachers, but it takes me about 10 hours to prepare a sermon. I don't know, maybe some, some of you are probably more, me, more theologians than I, and it might take you longer, but around 10 hours to prepare a sermon. Some longer, some, some shorter. And so, um, you know, you put a lot of prayer, preparation into the, into the Word and, and wanting, to, wanting to shape it and get it right. And, and then, of course, you've got to pray and then you prepare and then you finally get up and deliver the sermon. And your congregation hardly remembers any of it. <laughs> Sometimes I go, all that effort! <laughs> but they remember anything. That's why, that's why for me, just a thought on preaching is the title is very important yeah. and using visuals are very important yeah. so people at least can remember one thing. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully the one thing you remember is the double portion. Yeah. Everyone say double portion. Double portion. Because... What I, what I find is if I can just communicate yeah. one thing that God's saying, yeah, right. that we actually catch and remember, then the Word can continue to live on well beyond the meeting. Yes. And, uh, but I find generally people don't remember much no. from an environment like this. But I'll tell you what they do remember, is if I sit one-on-one -on -one and we connect and there's a, we share lives and we talk about the Word and I hear His heart and He is my heart, we pray for one another and we do life together and we disciple one another, that's what people remember. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the power of mentoring. That's the power of discipleship, particularly in a Christian setting. Mm -hmm. But it works no matter where. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I told you last night on, on the chaplain of Birmingham City Football Club, uh, our new manager is excellent, Gary Monk, and I, I get time with him probably once a month in his office. We talk leadership, culture change. We talk about uh, all sorts of stuff, his family, his hobbies, his interests, and and, uh, and one, of, one of the coaching staff is a guy named James Beatty. Now, if you know your football, yeah. he used to play in the Premier League. and yeah. um, He boasts that he only ever missed one penalty. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> some of these footballers are uh, very, very, uh, very happy with their efforts. <laughs> um, and so, but he's a great guy. And, and he is a quality striker. Like, when you see him on the pitch, he has still got it. Yeah. When he kicks that ball, it stays <laughs> like a bullet. And, uh, and so anyway, um, we have a striker in our club named Shay Adams, and I know we're in the championship, we're not Man City, all right, <laughs> just championship, all right, uh, but uh, we have a striker, and, and, and Shay's a great player, but he, he, he was 
for the last two seasons prior to this one, he'd only got around six, seven, eight goals in the year. Mm. But, he, but he always had potential. Mm. He always had it within him. And I think that's the power of mentoring and discipleship. When we as mentors see something in someone that they don't see in themselves, we see their potential. Yeah. We see what God's hand is on them, the call, the gifting. We see prophetically what they could be. And, and so it's that, that power of coming alongside and helping them become that. Now, what James did, James Beattie as a striker, he came alongside Shay over the, over the off-season, the pre-season, and, and spent a lot of time working with Shay Adams. Well, this year... Shay Adams scored 23 goals. Wow. Yeah, come on. Yeah. And I, in, in my seven years, six years of chaplaincy, I've never seen anyone in Birmingham get 20 goal, over 20 goals in a season. It was a miracle. <laughs> um, but it shows the power of mentoring. Yeah. The power of coming alongside someone with a bit more experience, a bit more wisdom, a bit more expertise, just coming alongside and saying, hey, try this, try that. You can do this, do that. And just to see that player, he's like a different player. Mm -hmm. And now some of the Premier League clubs are after him, but we rebuke that in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> but today what I want to shift tact on, and uh, I, I want to leave a little bit of time for questions and answers at the end as well, because, um, and it doesn't have to be about mentoring, it can be anything, because uh, I feel like whenever I'm in an environment, I want to be like the Apostle Paul. Remember the Apostle Paul in Acts 19 or 20, mm. when he had one night left in Ephesus. Mm, yeah. It was his final preach. Yeah. It was his final moment with the brothers and the sisters there. And so he preached all night. Yeah, yes, he did. <laughs> I felt like that last night. I felt like I just could have kept going. But we need sleep, I suppose. <laughs> Flesh man. But, you know, he just preached. And it says he preached all night. He kept preaching so much so that a, a young bloke fell out the window. <laughs> fell asleep. <laughs> you ever had someone fall asleep while you're preaching? <laughs> you and everything you've gone. Anyway. So, uh, so he fell asleep. Paul raised him back to life. And, uh, and he keeps on preaching. Wow, what a, what a man. Eh? Someone nearly died, but I raised him back to life. Now back to the Word. We're going to keep preaching. <laughs> And, uh, and, he, and he, I just, but I just, I want to, I want to empty everything of myself into you today. So leave some Q and A. I'd love to pray with you at the end, and just, and just pray for all of us that we receive that double portion, Amen. that double portion. Amen. And so, just in the short time this morning, I want to look. Last night we looked at Elijah, the mentor, mm -hmm. but I want to just look at some character traits and some uh, things that we can learn from Elisha, the person being mentored. It's like we said last night, actually, we should all have a mentor and be mentoring. Yeah. We should be doing it at the same time. It's not one or the other. Uh, now, obviously, as we get older, wiser, more experienced, then we're probably mentoring more people than we did when we were younger. But, but at any time, we should have a mentor. Amen. And I know a few of you came and we spoke about that last night, that you don't have that person that speaks into your life. You don't have that person that rings you up and says, how's your marriage? How's your Bible time? How's your health? How's your, you know? And so it's important to, if you don't have a mentor, I want to encourage you, get one. Uh, and, and what we're going to see in some of the lessons learned from Elisha here is how to be a good mentoree. Mm -hmm. How to be someone that can be mentored through the life of Elisha. So are you ready this morning? Yeah. The first thing is we have to accept the call to be mentored. And this sounds really simple, but actually you have to put yourself out there. You have to be vulnerable. You have to let your life, basically you're exposing your life to someone to say, come and give me a checkup. Uh, I think we were talking to one of the brothers last night and I, I said, it's like, it's like going to the dentist. Who likes going to the dentist? No one. Anyone like the dentist? Anyone go, yes, dental appointment today. Now, I don't like the dentist. Right? Have we got a dentist? I love you though. I love you. If you were my dentist, I'm sure it'd be all different. It's always funny when you see a dentist, where someone that is a dentist or a dental nurse, you kind of go, 
to my health later on mm. is stopped because I'm willing to have my life exposed, mm. willing for someone to drill down and, and look and, and, ex and, and, and examine uh, my mouth. So it is with mentoring and discipleship. What you're yeah. saying, you're getting on the dental chair and you go, ah, ex examine me. Look, now we've heard that God is our mentor first. Amen. Amen. And what does he say? What does David say? Something. Examine. Yeah. See if there's anything in me that is not in line with you, God. Yeah. So we do that first with God. But sometimes we can be a bit sneaky and go, I know God, you see it all. But, uh. but when you're doing it with a brother, that's when real power of accountability comes. And that, that's the power of being mentored. You're, you're allowing someone to examine. Now, now, here's the thing. They love you. And they want the best for you. And so while they're going to maybe touch a nerve on something that might be a little bit painful, ultimately it's for your health. Amen. It's for the best for your future. Amen. Amen. And so that's important uh, that we accept the call. So we see Elijah. God says to Elijah, go down and anoint the man named uh, Elisha. So Elijah goes down and he sees him plowing the 12 yoke. This is 1 Kings 19 verse 19. Elijah sees Elisha plowing the 12 yoke of oxen and Elisha went up and he threw his coat on him. And we, we saw that last night, you know. He threw his coat on him. Sounds a strange thing. If you're walking down the street or you're in church next weekend and someone just comes and throws a coat on you, you'll probably go, what are you doing? <laughs> but in this environment, Elisha knew exactly what it meant. It meant you are chosen. You're the one that I want to invest my life into. I want you to follow me and become like me and, and minister with me. And so he throws the cloak on him. Elisha knew exactly what it meant. And as we read there, it goes on to say, So Elisha left his oxen, ran after Elijah, said, Let me go and kiss my father and mother goodbye. And I'm aware in this room, both for you and I, we've done that. We've kissed our father and mother goodbye and we've left our land. And he said, Elijah says, Look, go back. Starts out maybe some second thoughts. Elisha left him and went back. He took the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He burned the ploughing equipment to cook the meat. And he gave it to the people and the eight. And then he set out to follow Elijah and became his servant. Wow. What a moment. So you get the picture here of Elijah choosing. We spoke about that, who you choose. Be wise and who you choose. Allow God to put the radar on. But, but if you're the Elisha, if someone's come and said, I want to mentor you. I want to take you under my wing. Or, or sometimes you have to choose someone. As if, if you're not being mentored, you have to actually go, yeah, actually, God, show me who you want me. And go and ask if, if they would mentor you. But either way, what they're doing is they're putting the cloak on you. But you've got to make a choice to be mentored. And it is a choice. Now, for Elisha, what you've got to understand in, in the time, if you were a poor family, you would own some chickens or maybe some other animal like that. If you were a relatively well, wealthy family, you would own one oxen. But how many oxen did a lot was Elisha ploughing with? It says 12, 12. pairs. One, 12. 12 pairs, is it? Mm -hmm. 12 pairs. So that's 24 oxen. Wow. These guys were loaded. <laughs> They were rich, they were wealthy. He had everything he could ever want in terms of material possessions and family and food and security. Everything was safe and comfortable. But all of a sudden, Elijah comes and says, Elisha, leave everything. 
and follow me. And that's the power of being mentored. You have to make a decision because mentoring is taking somewhere, someone where they've never been before. Amen? Amen. So when I am mentored, then someone sees something in me about my future. I'm not there yet, but I'm going to get there. But I have to leave the place where I am to get to the place of God's call and purpose and potential for my life. Amen? Amen. And so, but to get there, I have to make decisions to leave here. And for whatever that looks like for us, to let go. I think we heard that this morning already. To be able to let go of things, to embrace the new that God has for you. Behold, I do a new thing. Do you perceive it? God's always doing new things or wants to take us into new places or new revelations, new depths of understanding. But we can't get there if we are comfortable here. Amen. I think one of the challenges to the biggest call of God to the next generation is the mortgage. <laughs> Because once you've got the mortgage, you're stuck. Oh, I couldn't go to and be a missionary because I pay the mortgage. Oh, yeah, but I've got security and education. I was talking to one brother last night. His son wants to be a missionary. I think it was Victor. His son wants to be a missionary. How awesome is that? But I hear your heart when you say, oh, but I, I want him to get a, you know, education, degree and a trade or something, or something secure behind him. But actually, the greatest security... Is following the will of God. Amen. And I know that's a journey for you and, and, and I'm sure for all us as dads, we want we think we know what's best for our kids. <laughs> but God is what's best for our kids. His plan, his purpose. And so we've got to be willing to let go. And here we see the picture of Elisha saying, you know what, I've, I've got my security in wealth. I've got my security in family. I've got my security in this comfort zone. But you know what, if I'm going to enter into all that God's got for me, I have to be willing to burn it. I have to be willing to let it go. I need to sacrifice it so I can put on the sec the double portion. If I'm going to enter into the double portion, I need to let go of what I have. Amen. Jesus says to the disciples, come follow me. And it says immediately they left their nets. Mm -hmm. Now, can you imagine? Hang on, Jesus. Let me just grab my nets. I'm coming. No, no, I'll catch up. You, you start. I'll catch up. <laughs> Hang on, Jesus. I'm coming. Oh. Come on. No, I'm with you. No, we, we can't do that. That's not discipleship. Discipleship is all about a faith. It's going where you've never been before. Faith is about inheriting the promises God already has ordained for you. Yeah. But you've got to leave, like Abraham, the land to go to the place you've never been before. That's faith. Going where you've never been before. And so the disciples let the next go. And then they're able to follow Jesus with freedom. They had their hands free. They had their minds free. They had their hearts free. They were ready to embrace the new and enter into what God had for them by letting go of the nets. Amen? Amen. So we've got to accept the call. Elisha, rich kid, had to let go of his past. The second thing is that we never graduate from serving. <laughs> we never graduate from serving. It says there in 1 Kings 19 verse 24, it says that, uh, sorry, 22, it says that Elisha became his servant. Verse 21 it is. Elisha became his servant. For the next four to seven years, I was trying to, I was trying to get my research. And there are the two numbers. So somewhere around the time of four to seven years, Elisha followed Elijah. He served him. He did whatever Elijah asked him to do. He was with him. He was watching. He was learning. And he served him. We see Joshua serve Moses for a long period of time. Remember, when Moses was up praying, Joshua was fighting the Amalekites. Mm -hmm. It says that Joshua was Moses' aid or assistant or apprentice. And really, that's what discipleship is. Discipleship is apprenticing. Yeah. And uh, in, in everything that we would understand apprentice to be in a trade setting, that's what discipleship is. And so, so Joshua was an apprentice to Moses. And, and I love that time where Moses goes up the mountain and the glory of the Lord is there. And it's just the two of them. And then all of a sudden, Moses says, you know, I'm going to go back down now. But Joshua says, oh, oh, I'm going to hang out a little bit longer. <laughs> I love the presence of God so much. Moses, if you don't mind, I just want to stay up here a little bit longer. So much so was Joshua the apprentice to Moses that even when Joshua does all the great things, takes 31 Nation, uh, 31 kingdoms and establishes the promised land, he still says, you know what? I've just done everything Moses commanded me to do. Mm. 
Come on now. That's the power of mentoring. It's just the continuity of the ministry that has already started. And we have a responsibility to just continue the ministry that Jesus started. 